Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the Effect Audio Code 24C, and this is the Effect Audio Code 24. And these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Effect Audio for sending over the Code 24C and the Code 24 for review. To greatly appreciate Effect Audio, you rock. All right, cables. Uh, this can be controversial. Some people believe that cables make a difference. Some say they don't. Some say that you only need a, a couple dollar cable. Others say you need several hundred dollar cables to make differences. Some say silver makes a difference. Copper makes a difference. Silver played copper, all kinds of different things. And, you know, there's all sorts of um, beliefs about cables. And so... Uh, buckle up, this could be controversial. And so uh, please put on your sensitivity uh, sensors and uh, make sure it's active. And uh, let's talk about cables. All right, so Effect Audio sent over two cables for me to review. And uh, they asked me to just do a short video explaining the new cables that they have and the differences that I heard between them and, you know, just my random thoughts. So let's start with this one. So purple. Who does not like purple cables? These things are cool, right? This is the Code 24C. It is limited edition and you can get it in all kinds of terminations. You can get it with the um, Term X interchangeables that they have and you can also get it in connections with the Connex. Uh, connection so you can change the two pin MMCX or whatever and it just twists off and on. This cable has a select premium UPOCC uh, copper Litz cable, 17 multi size core bundles. It is proprietary multi size strand blends, 18.5 AWG on uh, two wire, and has some sort of EA Ultra Flex insulation. All right, so a bunch of stuff that I don't understand and uh, don't really know anything about. So I'm not going to go down that road. But what I do know is that this is a very nicely built cable. It is a little bit on the stiff side, a little bit thick. It is all like this hard plastic rubber uh, type of material, but very well built. feels very durable. And then you have this really cool split with a cinch that stays in place. Now there is supposedly a gem hidden inside the cinch. I'm not exactly sure all that, but I'll put a link so that you can, uh, you know, read all about it. Termination looks just like the split, just a little bit bigger. Very well built cable. I like that your hooks, they have nice tension to them. They are a little bit on the thick side. So on some IEMs, uh, they may bother your ears just a little bit, but I have no issues. Then you have the blue one, which is the Code 24. Now this one has Select Premium UPOC Silver Plated Copper Lits, Trio Flex Pure Solid Core System, 13 multi-size core bundles, proprietary multi-size stranded blend, 16.5 AWG to wire, and it has that ultra uh, EU ultra flexi insulation. And also you can get it with the Connex and Termex interchangeables. You get a same type of termination and your ear hooks. Now this cable is slightly thicker than the other. You also have in your split you have a gem inside the cinch as well. And you can spin off the Connex if you have that option. All right, so this cable, same thing, very well built, is a little bit stiffer and a little bit more kinky than the purple one. It doesn't straighten out as well. It doesn't behave quite as well, but it does feel very durable. It is also a little bit heavier. Uh, the ear hooks, same thing. They are a little bit thick, so when they go around your ears with some IEMs, it could be a problem. I like the build of both cables. 
I like the look of the purple one, but the blue one just seems to be maybe a little bit better built. Oh, by the way, you might be interested in this, the price tags. So the price of the Code 24, the purple one, or excuse me, the Code 24C, the purple one, $500. The price tag of the blue Code 24, $800. So cables, they make a difference. I believe they do. Um, I have several. In fact, I have five different pairs of effect audio cables. And uh, if you look around my channel, you can probably find a couple of videos where I've talked about effect audio cables. And they are my favorite IEM cable. Now, it's not necessarily because they're expensive and this and that and, you know, whatever. I think they perform well and they also look well and they're very well built i've had no issues with reliability i also have a bunch of other cables um and i don't really change cables out that much um i do test them occasionally but when i review products i review them with the stock cable but when i'm listening on my own time and with my own personal owned gear going on vacation or you know, around town, things like that, I might slip on a different cable that I do think performs a little bit better. Most of the differences that I have heard in cables comes down to between silver and copper or silver plated copper. A lot of times silver tends to have a little bit brighter, more energetic, a little bit more sparkly type of presentation, a little bit more detailed and maybe slightly better resolving, maybe a little bit bigger of a sound stage. And then copper tends to have a little bit more intimate of a presentation, a little bit warmer, sometimes is a little bit more natural sounding and is a little bit more tame. It doesn't quite have as much sparkle and energy. And then the silver uh, plated copper ones will add in a little bit more sparkle and energy and you get a little back uh, into the sound stage. That's kind of been my experience. And all those differences are subtle. They're very small. You're not going to hear this big, huge difference most of the time. So these two cables, how do they sound? So let's describe the code 24 first. This is the blue one. This is the $800 one. And the code 24 is extended very well. You get nice sub bass extension and nice treble extension. It is a slightly warm it has just a little kiss of warmth to it and it has a nice full body presentation it has a nice thickness and fullness to the notes and it has a very natural presentation and it's very balanced i find that it has a very accurate presentation when it comes to the uh, note weight and the overall tone and timbre. Everything sounds accurate and true. Bass has a nice impact, nice punch and slam, and you get a little bit of extension there into the sub bass. So you get some rumble and grumble. And then in the treble, you get a little bit of error and space and separation. Soundstage is nice and wide, has really good depth and layering, and, and it's very good overall presenting with imaging and tracking. Now you're saying, how does the cable do that? Well, that also determines on your IEM. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Then you have the purple one. This is the code 24 C. Now the code 24 C is a little bit different in its presentation. It's more cozy and it's warmer and it has more of a pleasurable presentation and it may sound a little bit more natural at times compared to the code 24 because it's not sparkly in energy and so if you are a little more sensitive to treble the code 24 c may be the option of iam cable that you want i found that it still has nice rumble and grumble but it is more mid bass focus than sub bass and it has a little bit more fullness and it's just a little bit more mellow and chill sounding i found that the code 24 c has a very small intimate stage. It's kind of cozy. It doesn't have as much depth or as much layering. 
and it still does good with details and resolution and tone and timbre, but everything's just kind of a little bit more laid back and chill sounding on the Code 24C versus the Code 24. I like both of them, but I actually do prefer the Code 24. And it's not just because it costs more. It's just an overall a better performer, in my opinion. I do have a tendency to like silver-plated copper cables. So, price tag. Are they worth it? Well, I asked myself that. And so, you know, I was like, if I'm using a $20 IEM, or, or $50 IEM, is it worth slapping a $500 or an $800 cable on? No. Is it going to enhance the experience? Now, it's funny you say that. Uh, you ask that. But yes, it does. Actually, um, I found that both of the cables did enhance the experience of budget IEMs. And it, I'm not talking about converting a, a $25 IEM into a $1,000 IEM. It doesn't do that but it does enhance the experience a little bit. You'll get a little bit more clarity, a little bit better details and re resolution and all that kind of stuff. It does subtly change a few things. I don't think it's worth pairing up with a $25 IEM. If you have a $500 IEM, is it worth it? Well, I connected it with like my Studio 4 um, from Soft Ears and it enhanced that experience as well. Is it worth it? Maybe. Kind of depends on what your budget is and if you're willing to spend that kind of money. Yeah. Is it worth spending a thousand dollar on putting on a thousand dollar IEM? Sure, your value maybe is a little bit better that way. Everything that I put these cables on, I felt it enhanced it versus the stock cable. Little. Not a whole lot. Again, we're not transforming these. We're not taking a several thousand dollar IEM and making them into a million dollar IEM. We're not taking a $50 IEM and making it into a thousand dollar IEM. It's just subtle differences. And it depends on whether or not it's, you think that it's worth the price to match it up with that IEM. That's for you to know. I, I like these cables personally. If I were to buy a cable, would I spend that kind of money? No. Why? Because I don't have that kind of money. But if I had that kind of money and I had some expensive IEM that I just wanted to pair it up with color wise, sound wise, that type of thing, I would do it. If I had the money and I really wanted to see if something altered the, the sound signature, enhanced it in some way. Yeah, I would take the chance, but I don't have the money. So it kind of depends And what you value and whether or not you actually think that a cable is good enough to change your sonic experience. It's been Dave, the honest audio file. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, and notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. Check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information on there regarding how you contact, follow the channel, support the channel. Speaking of support and channel, I want to thank my supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for all that you give to the channel. It's much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the links down below. There's all kinds of uh, information regarding how you can do that with PayPal and Venmo for one-time gifts or through Patreon and YouTube memberships for monthly subscriptions where you can get access to videos early and also access to my private Discord server. Also down below, there's all kinds of information like gear recommendations, music recommendations, and all kinds of other things. So check out those links. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.